Ah, there you are. No, wait, that's a professor. The professor was here last week, but I'm here this week. Um, that man has the sensitivity of a lump of fast-drying cement, really. But in any case, I liked his review of Aurora Black, I suppose. Not as good as I do it, usually, but, I, you know, he, he did his best. Uh, today, we're going to have a look at this ink. Uh, it's a, a sample I got from Chris Diamine Soft Mint. Uh, this is not an ink I would buy. Um, it's not the, the specific color that I, I appreciate, but um, Aziza suggested that I should look into this one. Uh, and I thought, well, why not? I, you know I have that bag of samples. Um, so, I'm going to go through them. Uh, I inked up some pens. This is completely empty now. Uh, and uh, I managed to shoot the whole thing without actually running out of ink, which is a good thing, I think. Um, and that's that's pretty much all there's to it. So what we have here, Diamine Soft Mint. It is indeed minty. It is that, that mint color. And it is soft. So it is very aptly named. Um, I found it a little bit hard to read in some non-saturated final nibs, um, but it's not a bad ink. Flows well, does what it's supposed to do. And I can tell about, talk about this ink for a while. I think the most interesting thing to do is just show you what it's like. So that's what we're going to do next. I hope this was useful, and uh, will be useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with Diamine Soft Mind. Well, not Mind, actually, Mint. As you can see, it's a very light ink. And that's what I don't like about inks of this kind, that it's just so light that in a nib that is not particularly saturated, it's hard to read. Now we're getting to a more saturated medium nib here. And you see that legibility improves a bit. And then abroad which is really saturated. Light switch. Was. That's a philosophical statement. We're not really sure whether a quick brown light switch really is or is not, but as FP geeks, we assume that it is italic. It's more accurate. Okay, then we have some flex. Flexy writing. Flex is good. We get some good ink flow there. Okay, and then we need some passes. One, two, three. And while we are at it, we may well do a bit of fat writing. I don't want to overdo this here. As I said, I had a small sample, so I didn't have a lot to ink my pens up with. So I don't want to waste too much ink here. I don't want to run out of ink before we've done all the tests. So here we have a simple D for dye mine. Now we're going to do a bit of regular writing.
I have the feeling, considering how light this ink is, that it's going to be ab going to be obliterated by the um, water in a minute. But yeah, it's pretty dry. Let's do a second pass. So what are we getting out of this ink yet? Well, not yet. What are we getting out of this ink now? At this point, we get some shading. I see some shading going on there, which is quite nice. Fairly light ink. I uh, can do that. Um, I really don't like the legibility in this fine nib. I think that's too light. And the other, other nibs, other pens, it seems to be okay. Um, I think we need to run a couple of tests. It seems to dry fairly quickly, which is good. Let's start with the bastard brush. Followed by the eyedropper of death. Now, as to the Tardif test, that moment you've all been waiting for, this is all I have left. So this is not going to be easy. This will have to be a dual test. It's going to be a fairly minor Tardif test. And a small brown benchmark. That's all the ink I have, so there are no more tests now. I think we can get rid of the water here see how that is doing. Yeah, so that's pretty much gone. And this writing, well, it's, it's still a bit, you can still see it a bit, but I'm not, I'm not extremely impressed here. Um, although I actually expected this would be completely gone, so it's not as terrible as I thought it would be. I think we can start to make a scorecard, but first let me do a third pass before I forget. go. Okay, the scorecard. We have cleaning, I'm going to give it full marks on that because it's probably, considering how it reacts to water, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Bleed through we'll have to see later. Color. Well, a turquoise. Uh, it's not really turquoise, is it? Aqua. Um, we have some shading. Well, I'm not excessively impressed, but there is definitely shading, so I would say that's a nice middle score. And then we have flow. Well, flow seems to be good. Full marks on that. And then it skipped, of course. I could see that coming. Feathering, not fathering. I have to check that later. We have drying time. Well, that seems to be pretty fast. Not excessively fast, but even on Rodia, it's pretty fast. I'm going to give it full marks there. And then we have waterproofness. Well, I use quite a bit of water there. That's still read legible. And this is pretty much gone. I don't know, a middle score. I don't think it's terrible because you can still read the writing. I'm going to give that a middle score. Okay, well then, later we're going to have to do a comparison with another ink. But for now, I think we first want to see some copy of paper, and that's what we're going to do next. So, hubba hubba hubba, what have we here? I think we have a fine nib. It 
Then we have a medium nib. Then broad. I'm liking it so far. There's not a whole lot of feathering, just a little bit here and there. I don't think it's as terrible as we have seen with some other inks recently. Italic. And flex. Good. All the pens lasted. Now we just need to have one final thing, and that is a big letter. And because I don't want to think about this for a whole long, whole lot of time, I'm just going to do the S, which for some reason I'm slightly partial to. There we go. OBKB, there we are, all done. Assessment. No feathering. No feathering. Maybe just a little bit here and there. No feathering. A lot of feathering. That should be easy to see, even when I'm not zooming in. But that is some serious feathering you got going with a wet nib and here in the fat writing in the wet spots there's a lot of feathering too okay so what about bleed through how are we doing in that regard well fine nothing medium or pretty much nothing broad here and there italic here and there flex significantly and fat writing also quite significantly but that is copier paper on rhodia paper uh, well, three passes, but for the regular writing, maybe just a little bit there in the flex. And this is Tardif Test and, and the Brown Benchmark, so that's not strange. So in all, I would say that Bleed Through is okay, not superb. I mean, even on Rhodia, you see a little bit of Bleed Through, so... Um, and Feathering, that's sort of a middle score too for me. So what we have here is 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 11. Inkage of 11. Okay, now finally I would like to do a short comparison with another ink. I had some trouble finding a, a, a good ink to compare this to because this is not a color I use a whole lot. I suppose Waterman South Sea, whatever you call that now, a, is it called South Sea? I thought it was. Um, I think that is along these lines, um, but that's a little bit more intense. So I found something else which I like more. So what we have here is this Diamine Soft Mint. And here... Hoping it writes. 
had some issues with the pen earlier. Okay, here we have Gerbin uh, Diabolomont. Now this one is even lighter than um, the soft mint, so I think this will you will have to check out the picture to to really see this. The camera uh, doesn't really pick it up very well. Um, this is an ink I, I pretty much hate. I got it at some point thinking it would be better, but as you can see it's pretty much illegible. Now it depends a little bit on the paper you use. Uh, with some papers it's a bit more pronounced than with others. Um, let's draw it, I suppose. Um, And don't forget that that was a very fine nib, so in a broader nib you'll see it a little bit better. Um, but in all, I think this is a very, very light ink, but it also has that sort of minty uh, color to it, um, which, which I like. I mean, I like this as a color of ink, the only problem is it's so light that I can't really use it because it's illegible. But, you know, check it out. Um, another one I thought of while I was doing this was maybe Noodler's Blue Nosed Bear. Um, which particularly reminded me of this flex bit, although that's, I think, a somewhat darker color. In other words, I'm having some issues finding a good comparison ink. Um, Diamine Soft Mint.